Welcome back on your really beautiful Tuesday morning. This is a live look over Sanford. Blue skies, lots of sunshine. That's going to be uh, the deal for today. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner has a look around town feeling really nice, looking beautiful. What else can we ask for? <laughs> we could ask for this for the holiday weekend, <laughs> which we're not going to get it. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we take a look at Goldsboro. Looking beautiful. Lots of sunshine. Apex, Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill, courtesy of Top of the Hill Restaurant in Fayetteville, of course, there. Our newsroom on on Hay Street. Our dew points are down, which may, which means it feels comfortable out there. Not terribly sticky. This high pressure system has been sitting over us for the last two days, yesterday and today, bringing us all that sunshine. High pressure systems have sinking air associated with them, so they tend to suppress some of the cloud cover and chance for rain. Now, we do have showers and storms well back to our west. Those will all continue to lift northward, but eventually a low and a front will develop and sweep through here over the weekend and then decide to hang out in North Carolina for the weekend. I mean, it's a lovely place to hang out for the weekend, but we would maybe prefer the cold front to stall over us. We are looking mainly at late day showers and thunderstorms. It does not look like a washout any day, but we could start things up as early as Thursday afternoon and continue through uh, Monday afternoon. So not a washout, but definitely a more unsettled pattern. Here's future cast starting Thursday morning and we take it out to six or seven o'clock and we may see a wave of some showers and thunderstorms coming through. We'll wake up Friday morning to at least partly cloudy skies and then late in the afternoon evening, we'll see those showers and storms developing. You know, the Friday evening thing is always uh, something to watch closely. If you're planning to head out of town to the beaches or the mountains or really anywhere after work on Friday and we add a little rain to that, it's always extra messy and extra slow going. So keep that in mind as you're making your travel plans. Saturday morning at 8 a.m., not bad. Lots of sunshine. 5 o'clock, still looking pretty good. Uh, but again, late evening thunderstorms are possible. We'll start there again at 8 a.m. on Sunday. Not looking bad. Again, it's going to be a fairly late arrival of the showers and thunderstorms. And then we will repeat again on Monday. So in terms of how much rain we'll see for the next five days, which takes us out to Saturday, probably around a quarter to a half an inch. But it's just going to depend on whether or not one one of those storms sets up over you and dumps some heavy rain because there'll be some heavy rain associated with those storms. But again, they will be scattered and late in the day. 92 for Thursday. Are you ready for that? It's going to be hot and sticky and, uh, you know, we'll just have to deal with it, right, Ken? No, let's pretend it's not happening. <laughs> well, we can't pretend the traffic isn't happening because it is happening. Uh, we're seeing the usual congestion that we usually see on the Beltline this morning to that. I'm going to take you outside and show you exactly what we're talking about here. This is a live camera now. Uh, at I-40 and Lake Wheeler Road, you can see uh, uh, traffic is building in those westbound lanes as well. Bumper-to-bumper uh, uh, bumper traffic, but that's expected this time of the morning. On the north side of the Beltline, this is what we're seeing. You know, if you want to get through and going all the way to Cary, you're fine. You get to US-1, that's fine. But if you're trying to get on those westbound lanes going to Durham, uh, this is what you're expecting. That far right lane, uh, that's what you're running into. But you might uh, try to find an alternate route, maybe Highway 70 uh, to Durham. Uh, this is a crash that we've been following. It doesn't necessarily look like it's affecting traffic in that area. In the U.S. Uh, 70 Highway northbound, uh, not far from I-85 in the southbound lanes, you see it's not causing any issues in that area, but we are seeing some major bumper to bumper traffic on those eastbound lanes coming in off of 85. So uh, keep that in mind, just in case you have any relatives coming in uh, from maybe Greensboro and you're getting, uh, they're going to visit you. Uh, this traffic alert we've been telling you about this morning, that lane closure right there on I-40 uh, of those getting onto Highway 70, that's entirely closed this morning. So you want to avoid that area at all costs. All right, thank you, Ken. New this morning, the Biden administration says it has granted more than a million claims to veterans who are exposed to toxic substances. The administration announced this morning that more than 888,000 veterans and survivors are now getting benefits through the PACT Act. That includes more than 74,000 here in North Carolina. Biden signed the PACT Act into law in 2022. It is the biggest expansion of benefits and services for toxic exposed veterans in more than 30 years. The International Criminal Court's prosecutor is seeking arrest warrants for war crimes committed on October 6th. He is targeting Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Defense Minister Yoav Gallant, and three Hamas leaders. Here's Amy Kali on what's happening next. Nobody is above the law. A process is underway at the International Criminal Court now that its prosecutor is seeking arrest warrants for several Israeli and Hamas leaders. They're denouncing the move. The prosecutor's absurd charges against me and Israel's defense minister 
are merely an attempt to deny Israel the basic right of self-defense. And I assure you of one thing, this attempt will utterly fail. The charges include war crimes and crimes against humanity. Now it's up to a panel of ICC judges to decide if enough evidence exists to go to trial. Some observers say that proof is clear given the October 7th attack and current civilian suffering in Gaza. If they don't want to be charged with war crimes, maybe they shouldn't have done war crimes. Others say it's hard to prove Israel is using starvation in Gaza as a method of war. I have not ever seen a successful case brought by any international court in any, in any circumstance where you've seen this siege thing actually play out. If the ICC judges find enough evidence, they could issue a voluntary summons or an arrest warrant. The latter limits a person's ability to travel freely because it calls on the ICC's 124 member countries to detain the accused. Israel has every right and needed an obligation to get hostages back. But you must do so by complying with the law. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The container ship that caused the collapse of the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore is back at port. This is a time-lapse video of crews relocating the Dolly ship yesterday. The ship will now spend several weeks getting temporary repairs. It'll then move to a shipyard in Norfolk, Virginia for more repairs. The FBI has launched a criminal investigation into what led up to that crash. Former President Donald Trump's hush money trial is nearing its end. The prosecution rested yesterday, and the defense may do the same today. The defense called Robert Costello to the stand yesterday. He's a New York lawyer who once advised Michael Cohen. Trump's attorneys say, as of now, they do not plan to call any further witnesses. Costello's testimony comes after Cohen was on the stand for four days. The judge says closing arguments in the case may begin a week from today. <laughs> Jeff Hogan of the Double Arrow Live Center. If you needed more information as to why we live in Raleigh, the new report is out. U.S. News and World Report on best places to live, work, and retire. Number six in the U.S. News and World Report ranking right there, 25th best uh, place to retire. I want to show you this shot. It looks like our sunrise from this morning. But why is this important? U.S. News and World Report and Milken came out with these rankings up from number three to number two on the Milken Report. Raleigh is there and why it matters because executives and folks who are moving into the area look at things like this as reasons to invest in the Triangle region or to move here from other parts of the country. Now, moving up that spot to number two, Milken noted Raleigh was the only large city in its analysis to rank in the top percentage of key metrics like job and wage growth, presence of high-tech industries, housing affordability, and income inequality. Now, here's a good point. Whether new construction can keep pace with the demand for housing, that plays a large role. We know that home prices are high in Raleigh, but our region in the Carolinas, three of the top 10 cities, Charlotte, Raleigh, Greenville, South Carolina, due to its strong job markets and quality of life scores. I think Raleigh's pretty great. Thanks, Jeff. Well, there are now five American tourists charged with possession of ammunition on the Turks and Caicos Islands. A Florida grandmother is the latest. Sharita Shanice went to the islands with her daughters for a Mother's Day trip. Authorities arrested her at the airport after security found two bullets in her bag. She says that she's kept a gun for protection in the bag before. And TSA in Orlando, they didn't find the ammunition when they searched her carry-on. It was an honest mistake. It fell up under the bottom of the flap on, you know, in my carry on. And it was no way possible that I could see it because it's a flap in the bottom. They took the bottom of the flap out the bag. She and the other four Americans now being held on the islands can face up to 12 years in prison. Some bags of pedigree dog food are being pulled from store shelves. The company that makes the food reports the possibility the bags contain pieces of metal. This recall applies to all 44 pound bags of pedigree's complete nutrition steak. It also applies to the vegetable flavor. You want to check for bags with a best by date of March 4th, 2025. That's what to look out for. The recalled bags were sold in 176 Walmarts across several states. And anyone with this recalled dog food should stop using it immediately and contact Pedigree's company for a return. Coach Rod Brendan Moore is sticking around for a bit longer. The Carolina Hurricanes signed him for a five-year extension. The former Canes captain said he could not envision being anywhere else. He also said getting his contract extended, it wasn't just about him. He says it was about taking care of everyone who has made this team successful. The entire staff received multi-year contracts. 
I think what, what makes us go uh, and be successful as a group is that I, I really believe we're a family in there. And it certainly helps with me knowing that we got everything covered um, from top to bottom in there. And we've got the best guys doing their jobs. And it makes my job really easy, to be honest. Now, since taking over in 2018, he has led the Canes to six straight playoff appearances and two appearances in the conference finals. And Hurricanes fans celebrated an incredible season at the annual Paint the Ice event. Season ticket holders share their love and appreciation for the team at PNC Arena. They left their mark on the ice this time around with messages like in Rod we trust, cause chaos and the loudest house in the NHL. Your children's school lunch prices could be going up. The Wake County School Board voted that's happening tonight that could cost almost $50 a school year per child. And the investigation after a miscommunication left the Bimbe Festival without a headliner. What Durham Parks and Rec is saying about it. As you get into your car, tune to WRAL News Plus on your radio in Raleigh on 99.3 FM, in Durham 96.5 FM, and everywhere on 101.5 HD3. Good morning and happy Tuesday. Time now is 826. I'm Michelle McConaughey. It is a beautiful Tuesday. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner standing by with a look around town. This is nice, but later this week it's going to get sticky. It is. The humidity is going to come creeping on back toward the end of the week, especially Thursday. Uh, so enjoy this while we have it. 62 in Wilson. It's a little breezy. Yesterday we had some uh, breeze out of the northeast up to about 1015. And we'll probably see that again this afternoon. 67 in Durham, 64 in Fayetteville. Lots, lots of sunshine out there. It's 60 in Tarboro. 64 in Fayetteville, of course, 62 degrees in Rocky Mount. So a comfortable start this morning. We'll see temperatures climbing into the mid 80s for afternoon highs. Walking the dog this evening around 80 degrees. Ken. Elizabeth, a quick check of traffic this morning. We can see the usual congestion that is building on a major thoroughfares, particularly the Beltline. There's a couple of incidents right there along Lake Wheeler Road, Gorman Street, uh, having an impact on the morning commute there, but that's the usual morning congestion as well. You're seeing it on the northern part of the Beltline as well as I-540 and the the Durham Freeway this morning. All right, thanks, Ken. A ramp lane from I-40 to US-70 or exit 309 on 40 East is closed. This may cause backups on your morning commute today and tomorrow. They do plan to reopen the lane at 3.30 p.m. this afternoon. It will close again tomorrow at 7 a.m. And Raleigh police officers are investigating two shots fired incidents they believe are connected. One happened at a home on Fitzgerald Drive where you're looking live. Our crew saw nearly 100 evidence markers and police say bullets hit a home. Another Another call went out nearby around the same time near Garner Road and Bragg Street. Next on Fox 50, an 18 year old is accused of firing shots at officers leading to a standoff. And coming up next on today, Best Buddies launches a new initiative supporting families with children with disabilities. Shot in 4K ultra high definition, your number one source for local news. WRAL News, coverage you can count on. Raleigh police are investigating two separate shots fired cases they believe are connected. What we're learning from one of the scenes after a home was shot at. And a Halifax County man is in custody after an over two hour standoff with officers. What we know about the exchange where authorities say he fired shots at them. And high pressure has kept us sunny for the last couple of days, but I'm tracking a system that will be developing rolling in for the weekend and show you when we can see some storms. Families in Wake County could soon be paying more for breakfast and lunch at schools for their students. Just ahead, a look at the proposal that the Wake County School Board is suggesting today. A lot of stories that we're covering here on WRL News and Fox 50. But of course, we have to say good morning to you. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Chris Lovingood. <laughs> and I'm Michelle McConaughey. Yeah, you're having your cup of coffee. Maybe you'll have your cup of coffee outside this morning because it is beautiful. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner tracking those conditions. And as she mentioned, uh, some rain later in the week. It's nice out there right now, though. We do have clear skies here. This is a live look, of course, at Fayetteville Street here uh, from our Jimmy V camera. Nice and quiet out there this morning. 67 is our current temperature in the Triangle.
Our dew point is at 62. That still keeps it at nice. It'll be on the more comfortable side. It's not going to feel exactly like July or August until we get to Thursday. <laughs> that is coming. It's still 59 in Roxboro, but elsewhere temperatures are mainly in the low to mid 60s. It is a little warmer there in the triangle at 67. Hour by hour, nice at lunchtime with mid 70s, but we'll be in the mid 80s for highs this afternoon under mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. Turning hotter toward the end of the week and then some showers and storms just in time for the holiday weekend. I'll walk you through it coming up, Ken. Elizabeth, we're just getting reports of a crash on I-440 westbound near New Bern Avenue. It just happened in the last five, uh, 10 to 15 minutes. We're working to get more information about it. And as soon as we do, we'll let you know what happened. But you can see uh, the Beltline there, the traffic is building in both sections of the Beltline, the northern section as well, the south section as well. Uh, this crash also just happened in the last 10, 15 minutes on Capitol Boulevard in the southbound lane near Buffalo Road, not causing any issues in that area, but just watch for some police activity. We talked about how the Beltline is really backing up this morning. You can see the westbound lanes going away from us, just slow going this morning on the south side of the Beltline. The north side of the Beltline as well, similarly, you can see the traffic. If you want to get to US-1, you have no problems this morning, but you're trying to get on to uh, I-40 westbound. You can see that far uh, right lane there. That's what you're going to be running into, even though it's moving rather quickly this morning. Just keep that in mind if you're getting ready to head out. This is another crash we've been following for the last 45 minutes or so. This on US 70 Highway northbound near I-85. It's not causing any issues in the immediate crash area, but just keep an eye on it. Just look for some police activity in that area uh, if you're heading out this morning. Of course, you can always listen to us on WREL News Plus and 99.3 FM in Raleigh and 96.5 FM in Durham. All right, thanks, Ken. Breaking news, Raleigh police are investigating two shots fired incidents they believe are connected. One happened at a home on Fitzgerald Drive, and WRL's Kelsey Coffey is at that home this morning. Kelsey, police say uh, sh another shots fired call went out nearby around the same time. Michelle, they do, and Raleigh police have been outside of this home investigating on Fitzgerald Drive for several hours now. So you can see them now gathering uh, in the front yard. There's several evidence markers that are in the front yard, but there were even more uh, earlier this morning. So take a look at this video. You can see more than 90 evidence markers outside the home. Police say they received a shots fired call from here around 3.30 this morning. They say bullets hit the home, but no one was there at the time. There was another shots fired report around the same time as this one that happened in an area about four minutes away from here at the intersection of Garner Road and Bragg Street. So police believe that these two incidents are connected. So we're working to find out more information about the details of both of these investigations. Kelsey Coffey, WRL News, live in Raleigh. An 18 year old is in custody after authorities say he shot at officers who were executing a search warrant. Halifax County Drug and Gang Task Force members responded to Elm Street in Weldon at about 830 last night. They say someone started shooting from inside the home, forcing them to take cover. More than two hours later, Umel Jackson walked out of the house unarmed. Officers say they then took him into custody and no one was hurt. Authorities have not said, though, what charges Jackson will face. The cost you have to pay for your child's school lunch may be going up. WRL's Laura Levine was at Southeast Raleigh High School this morning with details on tonight's school board vote that could cost you an extra $44 a year. Several families who depend on having their students eat breakfast and lunch at schools like this one here behind me will be impacted by this. The proposal is looking at increasing meal prices for next year because of the rising cost of food, supplies and to support employee benefits. The proposal would raise breakfast and lunch prices at all schools by 25 cents. Prices would go up to 350 and 175 for elementary school lunch and breakfast. They would increase to 375 and two dollars for middle and high school lunches and breakfasts. For a 177 day school year, we know this will all add up and that will cost a family about $44 more for lunch per child. It would cost about $88 per child if the family buys breakfast and lunch. Again, this would be the third year in a row that the school board would look at increasing meal prices. This is something that we will continue to follow as the school board is set to vote on this today at 1 p.m. Laura Levine, WREL News in Raleigh.
And school leaders in Wake County will also review a plan to add naloxone to each school today. The proposal would include training three staff members at each school and office building on how to use the overdose medication, reversal medication that is. Last year, naloxone was used 21 times for suspected overdoses in North Carolina schools, and at least one more vote is required after today's board meeting to approve the policy change. If you live or work in southwestern Wake County, you can share your feedback on the future development of the area. There will be a virtual meeting at 1130 this morning for the Western Wake area plan process. And this map shows the area exactly where we're talking about, west of Holly Springs and Apex near Chatham and Harnett counties. This is the fourth of seven areas the county is focusing on as part of its new comprehensive plan. You can join this morning's virtual meeting by visiting wake.gov slash WW. A flight attendant from Charlotte pleaded not guilty to secretly recording a 14 year old girl using an airplane bathroom in September. 36 year old Estes Carter Thompson III was indicted on one count of attempted sexual exploitation of children. He was also indicted on possession of images of child sexual abuse. This happened on an American Airlines flight from Charlotte to Boston. Authorities say he put his phone over the toilet to record the teenager right before she used it. Police say that Thompson also had recordings of four other young teenagers using the airplane's bathroom. He's due back in court in July. NC State says the two people who were shot blocks from campus this past weekend had no ties to the university. The first shooting happened just before midnight on Saturday on Sherman Avenue and Clanton Street. 22-year-old J.J. Cooper was killed. Another man was shot less than an hour later at Sherman and Gorman Street. No word on his condition. Radio traffic captured the moments first responders arrived at that first scene. Also advise unknown suspect information, so use caution on skin is going to be GSW to face. Cooper's mother told WREL that he was walking to the Taco Bell when he was shot and said that her son was loved and didn't deserve this. So far, police have not made any arrests in either case. Durham's mayor is calling for an investigation after a booking mix-up at the Bembe Cultural Arts Festival over the weekend. Durham Parks and Rec says that back in January, they arranged for R&B artist Monaco on your screen here to perform. That was reportedly done through a booking agent. They received another confirmation in February, but the night before the festival, Monica shared a post on social media saying that she had never been contacted or contracted to perform. More than 3,000 people attended that event, and now the mayor wants answers. We usually contract with a third party to bring in artists or produce an event. Uh, so the investigation is going to tell us where we are in that process, what money we paid out, if we paid out anything. A criminal investigation of fraud could be warranted depending on what's found in an internal Parks and Rec report. WREL has also filed public records requests within the city to learn who the booking agent was and how much the city paid. An emotional plea from a mother after a rise in underage drinking and driving. Get back home to your parents safe. Tonight at 6, what's behind the disturbing trend in a rare interview you'll only see on WREL. The head of the state's alcohol law enforcement talks about what they need to save the lives of our children. The FDA gave Elon Musk's brain chip company approval to proceed with a second patient. What well, the company plans to do the second time around after a few issues with its first patient. And it was a rap reunion at Eminem's daughter's wedding. Which celebrities made an appearance? Now let's take a quick look outside right now. A live look in Apex. Pretty busy out there downtown as people are driving through. After the break, Elizabeth Gardner will walk us through the rest of the week and what things will look like for this weekend. Ah, clear blue skies, beautiful sunrise we have here. Let's go ahead and soak it in. Enjoy today, maybe tomorrow too, because this weekend, oh, things are going to look a little different outside. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner is tracking that, including giving you a look at Franklin City this morning. Oh, it's so pretty out there. Everywhere you look, we're seeing this blue sky. Our dew points are still on the fairly low side. We're talking low 60s. And, you know, once we get into July and August, it's low 70s. And that just feels uncomfortable. So we're not quite there yet. It's going to be a gorgeous day today. A little bit warmer than yesterday as we climb into the mid 80s. But very comfortable heading out the door this morning. We're mainly in the mid to upper 60s heading out. Mid 70s at lunchtime, 
great lunch hour to spend some time outside. If you can grab one of those outdoor tables with an umbrella, it's going to feel really comfortable. I love our weather watcher this morning. I had, I had a white horse when I was growing up. So thank you to Dr. Daniel Schubert for sending us this one from Wade. So pretty. And we want to see what's happening in your backyard, your town, something cool that you've seen. WRL.com, search weather watchers, and it'll lead you through how to uh, download your pictures and send them to us. 84 in Raleigh and Durham, 85 in Fayetteville, just looking lovely for this afternoon. 62, uh, we, just, we just saw our, our muggy meter jump up to 62, so that actually puts us up a little closer to tolerable, and we are on our way through steamy and into humid as we get closer to the weekend. A cold front's going to come in and stall over us and bring us a chance of afternoon and evening thunderstorms each day starting on Thursday. But get out there and enjoy today. It's going to be a pleasantly warm mid to upper 70s at lunchtime with a fairly low humidity. Nice one for uh, lunch today. And of course, the Durham Bulls start a homestand tonight. It's going to be a really nice evening for baseball. The first pitch goes out at 635. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s. We will see a little bit of a warm up each day. 83 at game time on Wednesday and 86 at game time on Thursday. And Thursday is going to be a little bit more humid, but so much fun happening at the ballpark all the way through the weekend. 81 is our normal high. We're above that this week, but just slightly in some cases, except for Thursday when we hit 92, but it's just for one day. We see some slightly cooler temperatures over the weekend because we're going to end the day with some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Um, it's about a 40% chance uh, each day, and uh, it's likely to be afternoon and evening. So you're going to have a chunk of the day that you can get outside and enjoy. 92 Thursday, that one really sticks out, doesn't it? <laughs> Our morning low tomorrow is at 59, and then after that, we have some much warmer mornings as well, Ken. All right, Elizabeth, here in the WRO Traffic Center, we continue to monitor a crash on I-440 westbound uh, right around the New Bern Avenue area. You can see the bump of the bump of traffic. The latest update we received just a short time ago is that the shoulder of that road is closed, but you can still see the major backup that it's causing this morning, so keep that in mind as you're, if you're about to head out as well and that's part of your morning commute. Uh, you might want to consider an alternate route as well. Uh, this crash we've been following for a little bit now, Capitol Boulevard and Southbound Lane near Buffalo Road, not causing any major problems in that area, but just look for some police activity if you're navigating that section of Capitol Boulevard. Elsewhere around the Triangle, these are the usual congestions that we see on the Beltline, the northern part of the Beltline coming in from 87, all, uh, from the Nidale and uh, Zebulon area. That's the backup that you see in the north side of the Beltline, as well as the south side of the belt line as well around lake wheel road uh, is what we're talking about and we talked about that belt line here's the north side of the belt line we've been talking about this is our camera at i-440 and capitol boulevard the traffic is moving but uh still moving but still a little bit of a slowdown this morning Ken, thank you. A mother says she wants answers because she claims her six-year-old son was restrained inside a closet at school. The boy's grandmother found him in the closet when she stopped by Miriam Boyd Elementary School. That's in Warren County. She was bringing him lunch, and she took this photo and alerted the boy's mother. She says he has autism and is nonverbal. And she called the school's administrators, and they say, and she says they lacked urgency in their response to her. Nobody reached out and apologized. Nobody reached out and said anything. Nobody did nothing. WREL did reach out to Warren County Schools and got this response. Quote, the district received a report of alleged misconduct by a classroom teacher toward a student. The classroom teacher was a contractor and not an employee of Warren County Schools. That teacher has been removed from the classroom. We also reported the allegations to the proper authorities, end quote. The boy's mother says she hasn't decided whether she's comfortable sending her child back to school. Memorial Day weekend is almost here, and that means more families will be hitting the swimming pool. It only takes a second for an accident to happen, so it's important to keep safety in mind. According to the CDC, more children ages one to four years old die from drowning than any other cause of death. It's recommended for children to take swimming lessons by the age of four or even earlier if you live near water. If you own a pool, it comes with more responsibility. Besides swimming lessons to protect your child, I think everyone who owns a pool should should actually at least have an adult who knows CPR. You can go to your local American Red Cross and you can take an easy, basic life saving classes. But if you have that pool, it comes with a lot of responsibility. You got to have a fence and someone needs to know someone needs to know CPR.
And you can also install a working alarm. So if your child does sneak in, you'll, you'll be alerted. When it comes to life jackets, those should be Coast Guard approved. Researchers are predicting the global life expectancy to raise. A study was published about this in the medical journal The Lancet. It found global life expectancy could increase by up to five years for men and four years for women in the next 30 years. Researchers say recent measures to prevent and treat heart disease and COVID-19 are among the factors for the life expectancy to rise. The study also finds that chronic conditions will be a more significant threat to life expectancy than infectious diseases in the future. The FDA has okayed Elon Musk's brain implant company Neuralink to proceed with a second patient. That comes from a Wall Street Journal report. It comes as the company announced fixes to issues that occurred with its first volunteer, including embedding wires deeper into the brain. Neuralink's first patient says he could control a computer cursor with his thoughts, but noticed the implant stopped working after about a month after surgery. The company expects to implant a second patient sometime next month. Pro-Palestinian protesters interrupted Jerry Seinfeld's comedy show in Norfolk over the weekend. They began yelling about children in Gaza. Security escorted at least one man from this venue. You may recall a week ago, dozens of students walked out of Seinfeld's commencement speech at Duke. Seinfeld has indicated his support for Israel since the attacks by Hamas. People who use certain weight loss drugs may have a higher risk for stomach issues. Three new studies show that the risk of being diagnosed with stomach paralysis is higher for people who take injectable weight loss medications than for those who don't. Most of the time, doctors say the paralysis will improve after stopping the medication, and some people say that their condition did not get better months after coming off the drug with life-altering consequences. A North Carolina mom says it's never too late to live out your dreams. She has now earned her bachelor's degree at the age of 60. Melissa Gray walked the stage last week at Bennett College's graduation in Greensboro. The mother of four says she was inspired to get her education after a long battle with drug addiction. She has a message for others who are still hoping to reach their goals. Don't ever let the fear of failure stop you from living your dreams because it's not a failure. It's just an absence that you take for a moment and then you regroup, you restart, you regain and you win. Bask in her energy. I love that. Gray said she couldn't imagine sitting still at 60 when there is so much to do to help other people. The battle for the Stanley Cup is down to its final four teams. The Edmonton Oilers, they held off the Vancouver Canucks last night for a 3-2 win in their Game 7 matchup. The Oilers advanced to face the Dallas Stars in the Western Conference Final, and the winner of that series will play the winner of the Eastern Conference Final between the Florida Panthers and the New York Rangers. A celebrity wedding complete with some rap royalty in attendance. Eminem's daughter and her host of Just a Little Shady podcast, Haley Jade Scott, was gushing over her recent wedding on Instagram yesterday. She said in her post, waking up a wife this week before sharing just how much love she felt at the wedding. Haley married her longtime partner, Evan McClintock. The, the pair have been together for almost about nine years now. Eminem mentioned his daughter in several of his songs throughout the years, most notably his 2002 hit, Haley's Song. Hip-hop stars, including 50 Cent and Dr. Dre, were at that ceremony, too. Ah, she looked beautiful. A North Carolina native, Josh Sanders, who is from Kannapolis, is hoping to come out on top during tonight's finale of The Voice. Sanders sang two songs last night. Take a listen. We gather around your great degree. Who I am, that's the man I'm going to be. so good. Sanders is one of five finalists competing to win that competition. He's on Team Reba. He says at this point, it's anyone's game. Uh, it, it's an honor to be here. So much talent. Um, but I got to be honest, man, it's anybody's game for any reason. We're all in our own lane, but every, every single person, uh, I feel, brought the very best that they had to offer. They didn't leave any crumbs on the table. I have a good feeling you can watch tonight to see if he's crowned the winner. That's on WREL at 8 p.m. And hey, before we take a quick look at the break here, we have a look at your winning lottery numbers right there on your screen. Write them down. Make sure you remember them. And don't forget, weather traffic is just in a little bit in a couple of minutes. We'll see you in just a bit.